Welcome into Texans Today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chugs. Coming up on today's program, a little overreaction Monday after the Texans escape Jacksonville with a 23-20 victory. We have a lot to go over, and I'm pretty sure I know why a lot of y'all clicked into today's video. So let's get right into our topics on today's show. Number one, the first thing I got to discuss is the Aziz Alshire hit. Will he get suspended? As of filming this video right now, we don't have any news on if he's suspended just yet, but Adam Schefter did say it's very likely that he will get suspended. Bobby Slowick, did he save his job yesterday? And should the Texans be worried about the Indianapolis Colts? We'll talk about all three of these things on today's show, but if you're brand new to the program, this is how I kind of you know, rate my rumors, rate my, you know, storylines that I come up on today's show. If I give it zero heads or fake news, that means it's not happening. Obviously, nothing's going on. One Toro head, small shred of truth. Think of it kind of like 25% chance. Two heads, people are talking. Think of it like a 50% chance. Three heads, 75%. Four heads, I think you get the deal. H-Town, hold it down. So before I even get into today's show, I need to know from you out there. How many games will Aziz Alshire get suspended? How many games do you think he should be suspended? Do you think it should be no games? Do you think it should be one game, two games, the rest of the season? Get down in the comment section. Let me know how many games do you think Aziz Alshire will get suspended? And how many games do you think he will get suspended if, this come, if you're watching this before the news comes out about his suspension? So let's get right into my thoughts into this. Aziz Alshire, will he get suspended? Four Toro heads. I'm going to give it four Toro heads. I think it's, I mean, I don't see a way that he doesn't really get suspended in some form or fashion for this. And I know what everybody's going to say about, you know, watching the tape. I think everybody's seen the clip over a hundred times already of Aziz Alshire hitting Trevor Lawrence on the slide. And there's both sides of the fence. Obviously, you know, it's the, he didn't hit him with the head. He should have given up on it because he was a defenseless um, runner at that point because he slid down and then obviously everything that came on from after that with the skirmish on the sideline between Texans and Jags players Aziz Alshire having to exit the field with you know fans throwing trash at him and everything going on around him and that and I, I do think at the end of the day Aziz Alshire will get suspended for three games that would be my prediction and I honestly think some of that actually has to do with the fact of the stuff that happened afterwards with him, you know, having to get held back by multiple Texans players and personnel and having to get escorted out with, you know, talking to the fans and every, everything, all the hoopla that happened after that. And I also understand that part of that is because of the, you know, Jags players that went after him. Rightfully so, I'm, I'm guessing in his eyes as well, from what Aziz Alshire said earlier today and I do think the NFL will come down a little bit harder with a three-game penalty, but I, I, will, I do have to say this as well. People need to stop the hate for Aziz Alshire. You need to separate the man from the arena. Obviously, was it a late hit? Was it a dirty hit of some element? Yes. And if you look on Aziz Alshire's Instagram page, if you look on his uh, Twitter page, he came out with a public statement of, you know, the fact that he never meant to hurt Trevor Lawrence. He was trying to do his job. He was trying to make a stop for his team in a meaningful moment of that game. Wrong or right decision, I don't think people understand that Aziz Alshire is not a bad person. If you ask any former teammate, any former coach, any former person that has worked with Aziz Alshire, they've had nothing but glowing remarks about Aziz. And I think, you know, the fact that people are looking into his past, looking into, you know, the, what kind of cleats he was wearing, looking into, you know, where he's living. I know I saw people trying to dox his address online. All that stuff is way over the top and goes beyond what happened on the field. You're trying to take this man's livelihood. You're trying to take this man's family and his life outside of football and bring that into this play, bring that into this hit. And I just think that's wrong. I think that's straight up wrong of what people are doing to Aziz Alshire and doing, uh, you know, doing to his name outside of the game of football. Because at the end of the day, this was during a football game. This was a football play. Even if people want to disagree and say it was a dirty hit, at the end of the day, it was a football play. There's people on both sides of the coin that are saying, you know, it was a late hit, it was wrong. But at the same time, you know, 
it's really hard to play defense in the NFL, and especially when your job is to stop the quarterback, stop the runner, and make sure that they get as few yards as possible. At some points, it's a, it's a split-second decision. And unfortunately, Aziz made the wrong decision this past Sunday up against the Jags, but I don't think that has any shadow over his character or his you know self as a non-football player, as a person, as a human being outside of the game of football. I, I just think people need to stop the hate on Aziz Alshire. Coming up, I have two more overreactions. Bobby Slowick, did he save his job? And why the Texans should or shouldn't worry about the Indianapolis Colts. But I couldn't do today's show if it wasn't for our amazing sponsors over at Game Time. You saw the sweater I'm wearing today. Where are my Rockets fans at? I mean, especially coming off – off of that amazing win over the OKC Thunder, the Rockets are hot. And the best way to score Rockets tickets, Texans tickets, tickets to any sporting event or comedy show, concert, theater event at all is with our sponsor, Game Time. All in prices show you what you pay without hidden fees or expenses, and Game Time has zone deals. You pick the section, Game Time picks the seats for an average savings of 18%. And I'm telling you, especially with the holidays coming around, this is a perfect app. Go find, you know, a sporting event. Maybe a Texans game. Maybe a Rockets game. Maybe a comedy show. I, on the right, you see Gerard Carmichael, um, Josh Wolf. I've actually seen both those guys. Hilarious. And they're coming to Houston. Go check it out. Great gift ideas over there on Game Time. And for our viewers, I have a special deal for you. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Get started with Game Time. They also have the Game Time Picks feature, which basically filters out all the fluff, makes it where you can find the best deals on last-second tickets. It's what Game Time does. Go check them out today. Great deals, low prices, on the best seats in town. Bobby Slowick, did he save his job up against the Jaguars? I'm going to give it one Toro head, and I'll tell you why. It's yes and no. Did Bobby Slowick save his job for this season? Yeah, I, I do think so. I truly believe that Slowick would have been canned if the Texans would have lost that game to the Jags. I don't think you can go into the bye week, go into the rest of your year if you lose that game up against the Jags, which it was getting dangerously close at the end of that game. I think there would have had to be a change made if that was the case. And the, the Texans offense wasn't bad yesterday. Like, it was, it was okay. Like, you know, 326 total yards, 218 in the air, 108 on the ground, even though numbers a little bit of – uh, you know, inflated with the rushing yards because I do think Joe Mixon had probably three or four carries that toted most of that 108 yards, or I believe he had 101 yards on the ground. A little bit inflated. The Texans' offense was meh. It was okay up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The offensive line did much better. I will give them a shout out. I dog on them a lot. This game, they did a lot better than they have in the past. And at this point in the season, like I said, I think it's if they would have lost. That would have been one thing. But the fact that they won up against the Jaguars going into the bye week, I don't think you can necessarily can Slowick after that. And going past the bye week, I think it's too late in the season to make a change. I think at this point in the, in the season, you see what you have for the rest of the year going into the playoffs. And that's going to kind of determine what happens with Bobby Slowick this offseason. I think it's make or break for Slowick. If the Texans are one and done in the wild card round and the offense looks awful, I think they might look in other directions for an offensive coordinator. But if the Texans are able to make a run, if they're able to make it to the AFC Championship game, then I think he sticks around for another season. And you chalk it up to, hey, a bad year. Hopefully we can turn it around this year with some better O-line play and some more you know, health along the receiver spot. But at this point, I do think it's too late in the season to get rid of Slowick, especially since the Texans did win that game up against Jacksonville. Now, I have one more story that I'm going to talk about today, and it's surrounding the Indianapolis Colts. And I want to ask you this before I give you my answer. Are you worried about the Colts catching the Texans? Because they had a big win up against the Patriots this past Sunday as well to keep them in the hunt, keep them in contention for that AFC South championship game or championship. Let me know. Are you worried about the Colts catching the Texans? Give me a yes. Give me a no down in the comment section.
Should the Texans worry about Indy? I'm actually going to give this two Toro heads, and I'm going to say, eh, a little bit. They should be because the Texans' last four games of the season, their final four games, it's a rough stretch, folks. It's a rough stretch. You play, I mean, a bunch of tough teams, and this is the current AFC South standings. Eight and five, culture six and seven, Titans and Jags, I mean, they're, they're where they at. Yeah. You, you, you see their numbers. They're obviously not in it. So we're only worried about the Indianapolis Colts from this point on. And as we look at the AFC playoff picture, yes, the Texans sit there as the four seed, eight and five. But you see Indy, they're that first team right there. And the others at six and seven, and they could be creeping up. And the reason why the Texans should worry is the strength of schedule down the stretch is, I mean, incredibly lopsided towards the Colts' favor. These are the final four games for the Houston Texans. They play the Dolphins, Chiefs, Ravens, and Titans. Three very tough games, and these three games are also within a span of, I believe, 10 days. So not good news for the Houston Texans, where you flip over to the Colts' final four games. I mean, they play the Broncos. This is going to be a tough game for the Indianapolis Colts, but after that, you have the Titans, the Giants, and the Jags. All three teams that are, in theory, vying for that number one pick in the 2025 NFL draft, the Giants and the Jags more than the Titans. So, but it's time to lock in if you're the Houston Texans. You have to win two of your next four games if you want to secure your own destiny. If they can't do that, if they can only win one game, if they, I mean, knock on wood, if they lose their last four games and the Colts win out, the division is theirs. They win. You can't let that happen if you're the Houston Texans. The Just the amount of disappointment that would be around Texans fans around this organization, if they somehow fumbled this AFC South title and gave it away to the Colts, would be astronomical. You got to lock in. That's why this next game up against the Dolphins coming off the bye is a massive game, especially with two tough opponents afterwards in the Chiefs and the Ravens. You got to win that game. You got to win that game if you're the Houston Texans. I mean, you have one at the end of the end of the year up against the Titans where you could – hopefully get revenge and get a W back. But, I mean, you got you, you just have to. You just have to win two more games and get into that spot at least if you're the Houston Texans. That's all I have for you on today's show, folks. If you want the latest Texans news and rumors all year long, hit that subscribe button. It's coming at you for free here at Texans Today. We're almost to 22,000 subscribers. Join today, 100% free Texans news and rumors content, plus weekly live shows. I've got the game day watch parties popping here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for more Texans content.